Ron Olson. He is the Chief of Parks and Recreation Division with the Michigan DNR, Department of Natural Resources. Ron, always good to have you on. How are you doing? Good, good. Thank you for the opportunity. I think the last time we spoke with you, we were moving into the summer months. Now, just like that, summer is over and fall is here. How do things change at the DNR with the change of the seasons? Well, typically, uh, um, obviously, the activities that people choose to do do uh, migrate and change. Of course, a lot depends on the weather, uh, which has been, uh, for example, this week has been very good, and a lot of folks are out walking and running and biking and uh, kayaking and lots of things that they do. Uh, we have continued to experience uh, high usage at the parks even during the week due to the COVID situation. And uh, some people are uh, able to navigate with their kids that are doing remote learning. And sometimes they'll go to places uh, outdoors and conduct that sort of thing. But uh, but there's still a lot of opportunities. Many of our campgrounds are full uh, every weekend uh, throughout uh, this past month of September and sailing into October, uh, uh, mostly uh, particularly in the Upper Peninsula. For example, we've had a lot of people, I would call chasing the uh, colors uh, of the leaves changing. And right now it's peak, peaking up there. And it's uh, as you get further south, it, it is definitely uh, changing. Uh, and so there's a lot of opportunities in that regard. We've had record levels, for example, at the Porcupine Mountain State Park, where we have a ski area there and we run the chairlifts in partnership with the operator. Uh, and uh, we had uh, 1,100 people, I believe, rode the chairlifts in one day last weekend. So those are unique experiences, but everywhere we've seen uh, over 20, 25% increase in visitation. So it's been a very strong summer uh, once we got back going full speed and into the fall. Ryan Olson with us. He's the Chief of Parks and Recreation with the Michigan, Michigan Department of Health of Natural Resources, the Michigan DNR, joining us today on the Oakland County Megacast. And, and Ron, one of the great benefits of our parks all throughout the state of Michigan are the variety of trails and trail networks that we have. And there's a unique opportunity coming up for uh, Michigan residents in order to have a say in the visions and goals of the future of those trails and trail systems. Could you tell us a little bit about what that opportunity is for people across the state of Michigan to have their voices heard? Well, the, the trail system is very robust. It's over 13,000 miles of trails, uh, non-motorized, motorized trails. Uh, uh, there's many more if you include the local uh, agencies that have trails, but the network is very vast. You can go north and south, east and west, and connect to uh, communities. We're working very hard with partnering groups to create that network. There's been some tremendous connections made in the past few years, and we're uh, continuing to expand the Iron Bell Trail, which is uh, motor, which is a bicycle wheeled route up through the middle of the state and then a, a foot travel route that goes uh, some of which is bicycle uh, able to do that goes up the western side of the state and partners with the North Country Trail and up to the UP and around and it's created an inspiration to create connections and uh, so it's it's very vast and there's something for everybody and uh, ORV riding is, a, is really exploded in the last uh, couple of years and uh, that's going very well. And uh, in fact, we just uh, opened in partnership with it's a state county park in Oakland, uh, Holly Oaks recreate, uh, ORV area, excuse me. Uh, it's, it's near, it's within the Holly uh, state recreation area and adjacent to uh, Groveland Oaks uh, um, uh, County Park. And so it's a great partnership in a old uh, quarry area, 123 acres, ultimately it'll be 200. And that gives ORV riders a brand new opportunity that just opened a couple of weeks ago. 
Okay, for us that aren't quite as um, savvy as you, o OVR riders, what's that stand for there, Ron? Off the road vehicles. So in that regard, you're talking what, like uh, snowmobiles, things of that nature? Well, these would be wheeled vehicles uh, and motorcycles. These are off the road equipped uh, vehicles such as quads, they call it. They're four wheel uh, devices for off road uh, riding. And then uh, people that have four wheel drive Jeeps and some people have some very hybrid vehicles that are designed for with high clearance and goes up hills and over boulder fields and it's a it's a real challenge uh, and there's a, a variety of routes throughout that park uh, our uh, we do run a ORV area or off the road vehicle area at uh, Silver Lake State Park it's called the sand dunes the Silver Lake ORV area and there it's a different experience where you're riding up and down hills and valleys on sand dunes, which is one of only three like it in the United States. Uh, but it's a much bigger area there, but that's very, very popular. I would imagine if it's one of only three, how many rescues do you have to do there each and every year with some of these inexperienced drivers taking their vehicles there? Well, there are some, we have very st stringent safety protocols that People have to have helmets and they have to have uh, uh, seat belts and they have to have other devices such as a tall flag, a 10 foot flag on their uh, vehicle so you can see them as you dip down into lower areas. And there's speed limits and different things like that. So it's, it's uh, it, people do uh, have uh, mishaps uh, like anything else. and. We do have a number of accidents. Fortunately, not too many are are uh, extreme, but they do happen, and it's kind of a part of the thrill and risk of of riding on those devices. They have they have to have roll bars and different things like that, or we don't let them on. So, with all those safety checks and protocols, it does make it uh, a uh, relatively safe uh, recreation in the outdoors. So many exciting things that we can do in our own backyard when we explore the state of Michigan and we get outside of our direct neighborhood. As you had mentioned, the seasons are changing. It's all about the colors right now in the state of Michigan. It's one of the things that makes our state such an amazing state to live within. If I want to go within two hours of Metro Detroit, What's the one area I should go to try to see the best colors right now? Well, I would say that further north you can go. Uh, one one area that's that's uh, uh, kind of on that outer limits would be Rifle River State Recreation Area, which is near Rose City. It's east of West Branch, and it's uh, about 4,000 acres, and it's... Uh, like you're in the upper peninsula in the lower peninsula and the rifle river goes through and there's lots of hills and valleys that it's a unique spot obviously uh the further north you go the more the colors would change currently and i mean obviously in oakland county we have a number of state parks we have pontiac lake and we have the uh, i mentioned uh, holly state recreation area which is both of those are very large and we have Proud Lake Recreation Area in Highland. So all of those are all, as time goes on, are all have uh, very nice hills and valleys and very good views and uh, water bodies and things like that. So any of those would be great. Uh, as you go further over, we have Island Lake Recreation Area in Brighton, which is uh, over near the, uh, the western edge of Oakland County, Livingston and uh, then over into Washington. So there's a lot of those kind of resources, not very far and definitely within a two hour ride. In fact, uh, from there, you can go to the Waterloo State Recreation Area, which is 20,000 acres. It's the largest uh, public park space in uh, Southern Michigan. And adjoining that is the Pinckney Rec area, which is over 10,000. So in that complex alone, there's probably over 30,000 acres and 
it's got a plethora of, of, of trails and water bodies, streams and rivers and uh, things like that. And kayaking is a big deal and it's a great way to observe the scenes uh, from the water. Uh, not, not to say you can go fishing and, and the hunting seasons are commencing with bow hunting for deer and things like that. So there's a lot of variety of things that people uh, may choose to do. Ron Olson joining us. He's the chief of the Parks and Recreation Division at the Michigan Department of Natural Resources with us on the Oakland County MechaCast. Ron, you touched on the variety of different trails and trail networks earlier on in the interview. Uh, let's, t- let's talk a little bit about the opportunities for people to help the trails state shape Michigan's trail management plan. It's being provided by the DNR. A series of virtual meetings being held through October 22nd where the people of Michigan can participate and provide some insight or some ideas or or just uh, their opinions on what Michigan can do to set their further goals and vision for the betterment of the trails. Can you talk a little bit about what is available to the people to have their input heard in those virtual meetings? Yeah, the the state trail plan uh, last was done about six, seven years ago, and it's uh, time for it to be updated. And that's the process that we're going through right now because it's unique because of the the COVID dynamics that we are doing. We're having a series of virtual meetings. And what we want is to encourage people that to participate in those so that we can enrich and stay relevant with our trail system. And again, that involves motorized and non-motorized uh, systems, whether it goes from all the way from mountain biking and wintertime fat biking to uh, people that like to use rail trails that are paved, that are easy to ride on, uh, to the uh, motorized vehicles that people would ride on. I mentioned the ORV trails, motorcycle trails as well. In the wintertime between December and April, the snowmobile trails. But uh, we also have equestrian trails that people uh, ride on on their horses obviously and so it's and then now the emergence of water trails which uh, there's a lot of desire to take kayaks and and uh, go from point to point and and for circular routes to to experience different things and also there's motorboat uh, water trails too so there's a lot of things, but in order to make them as relevant and meet the needs and to explore trends and things like that, that's why we would ask people to go on our website and uh, participate uh, to the extent that people are able or to offer their comments or thoughts. And I'm on your website. There are so many things to do. I think that we forget about other than boating and camping and fishing. I also saw mushroom hunting. I have some friends that are really uh, into this, and it's kind of growing. How popular is it for people to get out into nature and hunt for mushrooms? Well, in the appropriate season, mostly in the springtime, the morel mushrooms, for example, are a coveted thing, and a lot of people keep their spots secret and uh, don't want to share them. But uh, in these areas that I mentioned that are not very far from where people live, these larger spanses of land, there are uh, definitely uh, um, mushrooms and also, of course, in the spring, wildflower uh, uh, searching and things like that. But in the fall, the colors and the, you know, looking wildlife viewing and things like that are, are all part of it as part of the evolution of the season. I might add that uh, just kind of a unique thing that uh, we do have a, uh, a text, uh, if someone texts 80888 and they can subscribe to what's called the bird and you can then, uh, it's, a, uh, it's a message board for uh, different thematic uh, activities. And right now they're uh, streaming out features on colors. So it's a good way to stay current if you, if you uh, are using your phone, but that's just something that we're, uh, you know, working on too. 
I love that thought. That's a nice way to keep people up to date because you know everyone has their phone in their hands about 24 hours a day. So it's a good way to keep up to date. Ron, uh, just a couple more minutes here with you on the Oakland County Megacast. Anything that we didn't touch on that you want the public to know before we let you go? Well, just so that people know that we have increased our lodging opportunities, particularly as we sail into colder weather. We do have uh, RVs that we rent uh, in the, some of the parks. We also have some other kinds of lodging opportunities. We have cabins that many people will rent in the winter time and ski and things like that. Um, so they, to check those out and the uh, obviously there's places where you can get fat tire bikes. But one thing that I wanted to feature just for folks that want to try stuff out, there's a company we partner with called Arrive Outdoors. And you can rent snowshoes or other kinds of things for winter recreation and they'll deliver it to you. It's obviously a fee-based program, but it gives you a chance to try out winter or outdoor uh, equipment that you might not own that you might want to try out. So you can go on our michigan.gov slash state parks and you can find all the access to those along with maps and different uh, features that uh, might spark your interest. That is such a smart way to do it because I know we're on the trail and we see people out there skiing cross-country skiing or doing snowshoeing and we always think oh we want to try that but do you really want to invest the money in purchasing that stuff on your own so thank you for sharing that with us uh we so appreciate it uh ron olson he is the chief of parks and recreation division with the michigan department of natural resources as always great to have you on bringing us up to date as we Prepare to get into that winter season. We'll be hibernating before long. But by all means, anyone, if you can take a little bit of time, get out on the trails and enjoy the beautiful colors right now because it is a sight to be seen. Ron, thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you very much and enjoy yourself.